one man so, company. And every like super successful artist is like, well, it has to be my way or like the highway sort of situation. But are there any specific um, like inspirations design wise, surfboard shaper wise that you think influence your work? Like it's a modern vibe. It doesn't have to be that, but kind of even just like, you know, who do you look to when you're, you're like super stoked on either contemporaries or like historical figures when it comes to furniture? Um, well, well, I want to dive in there real fast. Like when I was, when I was looking yeah. at your work, Ben, I saw some really interesting influence. I saw a little bit of shaker. I saw a lot of postmodern. And then I saw a lot of you. I was like, there, there, there are influences filtering here, in here. And, and then I saw a lot of like your hand, like, like your personal style. So thanks. Dude. I really appreciate you saying that. Like I actually kind of go, I go out of my way to try to not be influenced. <laughs> like I, 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 I follow people on Instagram and then, and then I unfollow them pretty quickly. Like when I'm like, this guy, this is what this guy's doing. I've distilled like his thing and I'm like, cool. That's cool. I like his thing. I don't want to like take his thing. I don't want to like, you know, so I'm like, like, that's neat. I've like addressed like what I like about it. And now I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore it because I don't want to take in what that they're doing. That, that said, like, I think my stuff's super derivative when you look at like my inspirations and my like, my earliest inspirations to like make furniture came from like mid-century or, or, or maybe they came way before that to be totally honest but like um the the mid-century stuff like spoke to me when i was like oh this is a thing this is like a genre of furniture like i see it. this is cool and like and i'm and and I learned that from a, a really good friend of mine um, in California. This guy Tim Swart. Um, he was a he's he's a, a in business like kind of surf industry insider, kind of an also an artist in his own right. Um, he started a surf shop called Univ in California, and um, when I I was I was surfing for a living. <laughs> And goes what was into the surf shop unit okay um in encinitas u-n-i-v unit yeah and it, it was like kind of like a streetwear crossover surf brand in the you know you know they started in 2005 or 2006 when i first went out there and at at that point in time i had i had like been like working construction and but had like no care about design like whatsoever. Like it was like, I'll make whatever you want to make. Like, this is how we do it down the shore, you know? And when I was out in California, I went, I was doing up my, my friend Tim had had this kind of surf skate street shop called Univ. And they were like, he had like really cool ideas and like showed me some of his ideas. And was like, I was thinking this and this, and I saw something like this in Japan and like, I loved it. And he's like, Hey, since you like woodworking, you, you ever hear about this guy, George Nakashima? And I was like, no, I never heard a thing about George Nakashima. And then, you know, Tim showed me a couple things and I was like, Whoa, that's really cool. And, and that was like, literally like, I mean, as far as I was concerned, like that was like when I learned about who George Nakashima was, I went from like being a carpenter to being like, like to like, like idolizing woodwork you know and and also seeing it as art and and like the timelessness of it like and then something clicked like right then so it was like working on his surf shop he had me do some really really cool stuff and he let me kind of like use my brain a little bit and we also did like a bunch of uh estate sailing that week like he just i was kind of just cruising with him and we and he was going around to like estates and buying up like you know cool mid-century stuff like sarin and tables and eames lounges and stuff like that and i was like oh that stuff's all so cool like i, I never really thought about it but that stuff looks neat like i really dig that and then mm -hmm. but i mean i have this like kind of classic country 
I was my mom and my dad were are, are both like artisans, I guess, if you will. And they had this like real country um, aesthetic in our house growing up, but my and our houses and and my, my dad built a lot of the stuff in our house, and he's also a wood carver, so he uh, he had this whole this whole shaping thing all in it of in his own right that he did and, and has always done and I and has been like inspiring me without me ever even thinking about it until maybe it's coming out of my mouth now. But um i I mean, yeah, my my parents have this real country vibe and then I have this like mid century vibe. So then you get you see this like shaker mid century and then I moved to Philly and then it was like this like industrial thing happening where there's all these big clunky pine beams laying around everywhere and it was like you know metal strapping and old nails and everything and like lots of raw rustic rustic but not uh you know like industrial vibes and i kind of threw you know that was that was a big factor or like a big kind of i don't know influence in my in my uh aesthetic at first i and see then, that that kind of like industrial influence and and that that interests me in in terms of like you you being in philly and making that choice to be there i remember i mean yeah. you know i i like i made a choice you know to to live in brooklyn instead of like continuing to live in long beach long island right and um uh and you know i never left because i i, I felt that 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 environmental influence was something that was going to propel my artwork and when I look at your artwork I feel like all right there's a surfer who's living in an urban center it may not suit him but there's got to be something there aesthetically that's like seeping into his artwork and when I look at your designs um I understand it like I I completely get it but I want I want like I want to I want to backtrack and like, you know, and the, the funny thing is, is that like, I was talking with Chris about like your artwork and, you know, and your, your, your furniture design so much that I had completely like missed the whole idea that you're a pretty damn accomplished surfer. And I was just like, and Chris was telling me all about like this whole other life that you had. And so I, I want to talk about that. Like, I want to know, you know, like, we can talk about let, it, let, I don't know. I don't know if one has to do with the other, but then that's I, the then, point. That's the point. That's yeah. what we're trying to get out of this. Yeah. But but then one but then they do have something to do with each other too. Because I, I can tell you that I do I do what I can do what I do like as a one man band, like because it allows me to have the time to surf when the time when the, it's time to surf and that's like you know, you only have, you, you don't get to decide, like, I'm going to go surfing on Saturday at 3.30. It should be pretty good, hopefully. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, the surf's good when it's good, and, like, that's it. And, and it's good, like, those, like, maybe 50 days out of the out of the year, and, like, none of those days ever line up with the time that you're off, you and know? If, especially. In Philly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm an hour, I'm an hour and 10 minutes from the coast, you know? So, it takes, yeah. it takes... And that, and then like, so, and that's like literally very far or not far at all. Like depending on how you look at it, it's an hour and 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And I could, I could go surf for, I could leave the house at 6 a.m., go surf for three hours and be home by 10. You know? I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. Like, trust me, I grew up on Long Island. I lived in Brooklyn for a long time. I was still within shooting distance of the ocean. I live in Fairfield, Connecticut now. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like when in relationship to the ocean, right? So, I know all about like, too. yeah. So if I if I've got to if I've got to sh- you know shoot up to Rhode Island, it's like you know an hour and a half. I'm like, that's a cup of coffee and a podcast. I'm I'm good. You know, I can do that. Yeah, and totally. I'll be- I almost enjoy it. I almost kind of like they're decompression times. You know, like that's all. Yeah, it is awesome that. that but like, that's also like why why I'm I'm solo you know what i mean i I can't like it was uh, for a while it was like finding a way to kind of like keep three you know keep three other people working and then i always felt like a like 
all right, you guys do all this hard work. Let me go fuck off and go surfing for a couple of hours, like, or, or the taking the day tomorrow to go surfing. And I always just felt like such a chump. Like, what'd you guys get done? Nothing. What do you mean nothing? Like, I was like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I always felt like it's like a total imposter when that was then, when that then, was the situation. And now it's like, it's it's great because it's like there's waves tomorrow. It's uh, who, um, growing up in Manahawkin and kind of like you grew up in a house did your father surf as well was it like a, a ocean going family you guys fishing like what, what was the what set the stage for you yeah. yeah 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 I grew up I grew up in a, like a very ocean going house um my dad is a a home builder was a home builder um and his company was called James R. McBrien and Sons, though I technically never got, never saw my, my share of that, that business. Um, but anyway, yeah, he, my dad was a builder. And then he was also, he also carved, he was like a duck carver. Like he would carve um, decoys. decoys. Yeah. Like duck decoys, but not really decoys. He didn't really do the decoys. He did the replicas. Like he would do like lot like real life replica ducks um, and geese, or, yeah, stuff like that. But like, I use these for an art. But yeah, that's a, like, that's a plastic one. Though. And my daughters found them in my garage, and like we have the duck. I was like, you take the duck home. It's pretty nice. But yeah, that's a pla- Yeah, that's a plastic one. Plastic. Yeah, but my dad would make, would carve those from wood and like and paint them. And he's like, and he still does to this day. He's still, he's still like, he got into wood turning and he's like, he's an, he's an absolute artisan. And then my mom is, is, it's crazy, but my mom, I never really like remembered how much of an artist that she was until like pretty recently, but she did this, this German paper cutting called Schirrenschnitt, um, which it's really cool, man. They just like they they just uh, they cut paper with really tiny scissors, like kind of like exacto knife style, until they have these like yeah, they're not like uh, they're not like little little people, but she would do these cutouts with like lots of like reliefs, and it it never even really occurred to me because I'll, I'll tell you about some other influences that I had, but I I always loved woodcut painting. Mm-hmm. Like, like woodcut prints you know like block prints and my favorite my personal largest influence as a as an artist and human is this this guy Wharton Eshrick and um like not very many people know who that is or what he did but he was a really cool Philadelphian um and um that he was a huge influence on me like like the same year that I like learned about furniture from George Nakashima, somebody said to me like, Oh, here's an article from this like magazine from like 1978 about this, this uh, Wharton Eshrick guy. And you should try to go to his house someday if you ever get a chance. And I was like, cool. And then I like, look at this, this article out of like fine woodworking magazine. I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. Like this guy seems neat. And I bought a couple books about him and I started reading up and I'm like, man, this guy's like a kindred spirit. Like he was, this guy was doing like, was like reclaiming stuff and repurposing and like upcycling, which I hate that word, but like upcycling. Yeah. I hate that. Wood <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the depression, in the, in the, during the depression in the 1930s, he was making chairs out of like old, uh, wagon spoke wheels and stuff that had gone out of out of date like so there was like all this back catalog of like hammer parts because nobody needs hammers anymore maybe got electric manholes you know what i mean and then they're like so he came up with this chair built out of hammer parts and he started making stuff. like this guy was like so next level and like so far ahead of his time but it, he also did these wood prints these block prints and um and those look so, like real similar to this German paper cutting style where you would like, you would cut out black paper and lay it over white so that you would see like, like a real relief, relief, almost like a block cut 
Uh, um, and anyway, it never, it, I,